Hey everybody, Eric back again, your learning futurist. Well, let's talk about augmented reality and maybe augmented reality games and retinal projection, or maybe even diminished reality, where we use augmented reality to take things out of the real world, or having holographic augmented reality board games to be played and enjoyed at home. Well, actually, these are all technologies just around the corner coming to real life and Star Trek is going to help us understand them and our role with those technologies and help us maybe understand that it's just not such a long road to get from there to here. <laughs> coming right up. Well, as a futurist, Star Trek has been a never-ending source of helping relate signals that are in the research that I'm doing and the technology trends and kind of relate that back to humanity and how we're going to be interacting with these things in our individual lives and in society. And in these three examples, I think, are a little bit telling of these new technologies related to the metaverse and augmented reality and how we might try to avoid some pitfalls uh, moving towards the future. This first example is from season five, episode six, I believe, called The Game, where number one, Commander Riker goes on vacation to a pleasure planet and is given an augmented reality headset, which is a video game controlled by his mind. And he takes it back to the ship and finds out later that it's fairly addictive and it was in a plot to actually mind control the crew and take over the ship. Uh, but this technology uh, is kind of telling about actually where we're starting to move towards with these headsets. Right now, we use a lot of glass, a lot of projection, a lot of VR headsets are using very high dense pixel pictures to give us that kind of feeling of, of depth between our eyes getting really close to a screen or some sort of projected glass image. But Retinal projection is something just around the corner. It's actually been patented in the last couple of years. A couple of research papers are out on it. And this is actually pointing the projectors and blasting those uh, photons directly into your retina. And you could do a lot of interesting things around this as far as being able to display things for humans. And what we're seeing now is actually an example of one of these patented technologies where uh, a, a kind of semi-reflective piece of glass is reflecting a projector directly into the back of your eye. And so this might help solve a lot of the problems right now that we're seeing around the optics of having these clunky headsets on top of our head, which include the recent uh, HoloLens and HoloLens 2 by Microsoft, uh, which is probably the most popular headset for augmented reality out right now. Uh, it's even been put into use in the military testing right now and bill billions of dollars in contracts from Microsoft to the U.S. military as well. So this is something that uh, is already in fairly well use, uh, widespread use. And with this very device, somebody actually recreated uh, the scene from Star Trek using the HoloLens. So this is actual view through the HoloLens glass and trying to recreate the image. So this is the real world behind an actual game represented here. But an even more telling thing about this episode is uh, how they start to go into the plot about how this device was actually um, stimulating these pleasure centers of the brain and actually kind of implanting commands and actually starting to mind control the crew, which through my research in educational technology and the use of media is not that far off. Uh, we still have yet to know a lot of the psychological effects of using virtual reality, but we do know things used like virtual reality and augmented reality as a media really affects us more deeply than other traditional medias that come before it. Just that little bit of agency, just that little bit of being able to uh, feel like you're inside it. We build more empathy. We feel more strongly about the things that we get shown in virtual and augmented reality. And I can conceive uh, if it's designed well enough, um, it will help exacerbate a lot of these psychological effects we're seeing now with social media and the like of 
controlling us, getting in these compulsion loops, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, this episode not only goes into the device, and it's kind of a little bit hokey in the fact that it's just mind controlling the crew, actually has a little bit of a signal, I think, for using this kind of technology. And when we start putting headsets on our heads and beaming uh, photons into our minds through the lens of algorithmic uh, projection and media, especially when connected to engagement algorithms, perhaps. All right, second example is from Star Trek Deep Space Nine, season six, episode one, A Time to Stand. And this is when the crew of Deep Space Nine actually steal a Jem Hadar warship and it has a very different way of actually viewing space from inside the bridge. Normally in these starships, they have a window or a view screen where they can look out and see what's happening outside the ship. Uh, the way the command structure is set for this alien race, they only want to let one or two people actually see outside. And so they put these headsets on that allow them to actually look through the hull of the ship through this headset at where they're seeing now. So now you can see... Uh, Captain Sisko is the only person able to look outside of the ship through the hull wherever he's looking. And this is actually a technology that's been around for a long time. It's called diminished reality. It's when you put on an augmented reality headset or view the world through a digital lens and it removes things from reality for whatever purpose. This has been happening for years on Google Street View where uh, people are automatically removed from uh, Google Street View for privacy reasons. And you don't really see people anymore on Google Street View because they're diminished. They've been taken out of that photograph. And this happens in real time in diminished reality. So you put it in this headset and it's kind of calibrated to the person and wherever they move their head, it's, it's obviously tracking their movements like most headsets do. Wherever they look, perhaps there's a 3D a 360 degree camera on the hole somewhere many places and that is taken out so where they look they're actually seeing through the hull of the ship out into space and the only ones that can see it and this actually you can see it already in real life there's an example from shibuya here in tokyo japan where they're actually using images and removing buildings from real life so you just he's probably touching on these buildings and he's set up these things to actually take things out of reality. So you're, you, this is actually a, a smartphone app. You can see a little bit of shadowing because the, the computer vision is not doing the most perfect job of, of taking that stuff out and replacing the background of it. It's more like rotoscoping or a lot of other things that happen in Photoshop, but this is happening in real time. So that is diminished reality. And we can see a lot of functions of it already, like being able to see different types of furniture in your house, remove the furniture, add different furniture, or we actually saw a real life Star Trek app uh, about five, six years ago where it would have some image recognition and you would actually beam your uh, Captain Picard doll out of existence and only show that kind of augmented reality trigger behind it. And so that's using that same diminished reality technology. Uh, we also saw this in an episode of Black Mirror called White Christmas, where uh, the main protagonist, John Hamm, was sentenced to not being able to interact with people. So wherever he looked, wherever he went, uh, the, not only the, were people erased from his view their, their view, their listening was also removed from their um, hearing. So he couldn't hear people uh, as he went through life. So his interaction with humanity was diminished in this case. Uh, one important thing to note about this technology is that it, even in this episode, they talk about how it was geared uh, biologically to the user. And we're already seeing a lot of this happening right now. Uh, cyber sickness, being able and getting sick and not being uh, kind of calibrated to our biological systems and how it gives us headaches, how it can get us fatigued. I saw this in my own research uh, here at the Kyoto University of Foreign Studies when I had students doing and creating and curating virtual tours in a tourism um, 
kind of tourism and hospitality uh, vocational training course in virtual reality. The students couldn't really last more than a couple of minutes before getting a little bit fatigued in virtual reality because of these cheap uh, glasses and they weren't calibrated correctly to the students' interpupillary distance or their eyesight got strained as well. All right, third example, which is back from Next Generation, season two, episode 21, episode called Peak Performance. And in this episode, a lot of the crew are engaged in this game called Stratagema, Stratagema, Stratagema. And it's basically kind of like a puzzle game, two player game, where a holographic grid is displayed in front of the two players and it's controlled by their, the elements are controlled by their hand and finger movements. And one person moves, other person moves, and you have to kind of lock out space in these kind of layers of three dimensional grids. Uh, this is very unique and telling in the technology in a lot of ways uh, because right now we are doing a lot of hand tracking with usually with cameras. So the need for this technology to actually put things onto your fingers uh, maybe isn't so necessary anymore. If we have a couple of cameras anywhere, we can track the movements of our fingers pretty well now. So I imagine what we have today would not need those finger movements, those little things that added onto on to your hands. But we do have similar things already in virtual reality with uh, finger placement sensors on all of our hand controllers in VR to actually know our fingers and how they're placed on the controller. So now we can actually move our fingers and grip things in virtual reality. But this is also telling in the way that we're moving to actually project things using augmented reality into the real world. And this is a very exciting example because um, a Kickstarter that came out two years ago got delayed a bunch, mostly because of the pandemic and um, other issues, uh, is using a type of augmented reality that's a bit different. This is actually projected augmented reality. So what now we're looking through is actually, we're looking through the lens of some uh, head-mounted glasses, but it's not a lens as far as overlaying images through kind of a glass in front of our eyes, it's actually projecting light from the goggles and that light is being reflected back to us from the board. And no matter where you move and position your head, the projection, the light coming out of your headset to be reflected back off from the board is then changed. So this startup called Tilt5, uh, you can actually be two different people looking at the same board and have two different perspectives of it because you're both projecting the light and that light is being uh, shown back to you um, like a mirror, uh, de depending on how you're looking at it. And this is kind of just like a reflective surface that you might put on like one of those uh, safety vests or whatever. But what's really interesting here is that this is using a different approach to actually project the light from the headset itself and reflect that back to you. I'm going to get my hands on one of these myself and going to be experimenting with them a bit later. So what do you think? Augmented reality, Trek Foresight, and the future of humanity and augmented reality in the metaverse from these examples from Star Trek. Some of them... Uh, of course, like Star Trek is very positive, very optimistic about the future, but there's also some hints of some things that we could avoid, like some of these psychological and um, maybe addictive uh, things that can go along with this type of media and the ability to show one person something of the real world or take out something from the real world, which other people have no kind of sense of what's happening. So our common sense of reality is diminished to, to steal another term from this video. Love to hear your thoughts. Put them in the chat or the uh, comments down below, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.